Interview and job search strategies that work. I had an interview over the weekend, and what I realized about my about about these this process basically right is um, good, bad, or indifferent. The interview really it it just um, it just makes me feel good. It really it really gives me a chance to almost test my skills, almost tell the the world almost like validating what I know, basically. So that's the enthusiasm that I feel when I go in an interview. And I didn't, I didn't realize it till, you know, until afterwards, like, wow, I, and, and maybe you're like me uh, in that feeling. So, so why do I say that? If you're, if you're a company and if you, you know, if you want to, or if you're an employer, I'm sorry, rather, if you're, you're an uh, employee, Try to, you know, go in as many interviews as possible because that way you kind of know what's in the outside. You know where you are, what skill sets you have. That way, I look at it like this. The more interviews I go on, the more I know about the marketplace. What does the market need? What kind of skills do I I need to have? Um, What are the companies looking for? Do I have what they need? You know, if the company doesn't need me tomorrow, they go out of business, whatever. Um, do I have the skills, you know, to go to the next job? And by doing as many interviews as possible, I'll know that. I mean, I won't know exactly that, but I have a really good idea of, of what I need to put on my resume, what skills I need to learn, uh, what type of training do I need to attend? What do I need to, what do I need to do? You know, so that I can, I get, and I know after a while it gets old, like, okay, because you're probably, mo- most people are like this. You know, I don't want to have to, you know, most people are like, oh, I don't want to have to go through the interview and test, you know, my skills and all this other stuff because you're you're at a nice location, nice, comfortable job. And but if you go in an interview before you need to to leave your company or if it's neat, not needed, you're, you're comfortable where you're at now. You know, you have um, in, in my mind, it's it's less stress. It's more, it's less, uh, it's just like fun. Okay. Let's just get fun. Let's learn what I need, need to know, uh, without having to actually, you know, worry about taking the, any offer possible. Right. Cause when you don't have a job, you have to take pretty much any offer you get. I mean, not any offer, but for the most part, maybe you might have three, four, five companies coming at, um, offering you, uh, giving you an offer letter. And you're going to pick one of those, but if you have a job, well, you can you can just wait for the right right position or the right right type of job. So now on to the meat and potatoes of the interview, right? As you probably know, I'm in I work in the storage industry. I'm a storage guy, right? And of course, I've done a lot of other jobs: network, microwave, satellite, Windows admin, sysadmin. And in preparing for the the interview, um, I found there's a website out there, a Cisco website, right, that teaches you. Well, I'm sorry, it doesn't teach you. It gives you a visual, like a 3D model of their hardware. Uh, more importantly, I was um, it was about the Cisco UCS Unified Communication Server. Anyway, basically, it's a um, it's a storage, not it's not a storage device really. It's more of a processing power device, like a like an ESXi host, uh, a VMware. Basically, you can you can use it to um, serve up VMs. Your storage comes from like Dell or EMC or Quantum, Nutanix, one of those type of vendors, right? But the the processing power all comes from Cisco. And um, I'll actually include that in the in the show notes, uh, the link to that, by the way. And um, the other thing I was preparing, or rather, only th- other thing I I hit on was the Global Knowledge uh, 2018 report, which talks about the different jobs out there, what they get paid uh, in the IT field, anyway. And it, g- it gives like a breakdown of uh, worldwide, actually, what certifications are needed. How much they get paid? For instance, so AWS is the biggest one right now. Uh, it pays about one hundred and twelve thousand dollars a year, average, right? Average, average pay for that. 
Um, and I'll, again, I'll include that in the, in the show notes as well so that everybody can take a look at it. So just so I can talk about a little bit about uh, what type of interview you're after when you, you have a storage. Uh, I know I've, I've talked a little bit about Active Directory and a little bit about networking. We've had, we've had um, IT Johnny on before talking about some networking um, skills that you need to be a, a network admin. So I'll tell you this. For a storage admin, storage administrator, why is that a big deal, right? A storage admin, storage engineer, store backup admin, etc. You touch every IT field. You know, backup uh, storage, for that matter, touches everybody. Um, it touches all fields. Networking, uh, because the network people... You need to give them LUNs. You need to give them storage. Uh, they need to set up the switch. They need to set up the the fabric extender, uh, whatever the Cisco switch is, the MDS or whatever. Um, that's that. The Windows admin people need to talk to you because you need to give them LUNs. You need to give them data stores so that they have a uh, hard drive space for their Windows VMs. Your database people, Oracle or SQL Server database people, you need to give them space for their, their databases. The application people, SharePoint, uh, Tavo- not Tavoli, SharePoint, IBM Maxima, whoever it is, they need also storage as well. You know, there, there's uh, it's not only processing power, but storage is the most important thing. Your IA people, their IA people need information assurance people. Also need, uh, you need to talk to them if you're a storage person because you need to give them uh, space for their logs, whatnot. So if you know nothing else about storage, right? Know this. In an enterprise level uh, environment, meaning, I don't know, 20,000, 30,000, 100,000 users that all get their data. Maybe there's an application that serves, I don't know, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 customers. Let's maybe even break it down easier. Amazon. When you go to Amazon, the front end is like a, a page, right? The sp- screen you go on, you can click, I want to buy this. The back end is most likely a database. And that database is residing in some sort of storage, whatever that storage device is. If storage is just going to get uh, more important and more important, you know, as time goes on, it's going to become more relevant Used to be it was a an afterthought. Okay, let, oh, let's just stick a Windows guy on that. Windows girl, Windows admin, whoever it is. Yeah, yeah, they'll they'll take care of that. We'll take care of that storage stuff. Right, yeah, yeah, no worries. And now it's becoming more and more. It's just a full-time J-O-B. You know, you need a person who's a storage, uh, storage admin, storage engineer, and whatnot. And, you know, they, the, 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 big, the big name players out there, right? Are EMC, which is Dell EMC, right? You know that. That's um, and also Quantum. That's another big player as well. Uh, Nutanix is also out there, and of course NetApp. Those are storage storage vendors. They do, you know, NetApp does other things as well. Uh, EMC, Dell EMC does the thing, other things as well. But uh, those are the, you know, some of them. If you just Google any one of those three, you're going to see or put them on YouTube. You're going to find some nice knowledge out there about uh, what it is that they bring to the table. You can probably look at uh, you could probably look at cloud computing the same way if you want to. Um, and it's a storage like a pseudo storage admin, if you will. OK, well, uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to this podcast and have yourself a great day.